जय श्री माता जी आप सबका स्वागत है आज के इस सामूहिक ध्यान में श्री माता जी को प्रणाम करेंगे और सामूहिकता में कुंडलिनी चढ़ाकर बंधन लेंगे तीन महामंत्रा श्री गणेश मंत्रा Mom. 
चित्त केंद्रित करेंगे अपने सहस्त्रार पर परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत तो होकर हमें निर्विचार अवस्था प्रदान कीजिए श्री माता जी कृपावंत तो होकर हमें निर्विचार अवस्था में स्थिर कीजिए इसी अवस्था में स्थिर होकर हम श्री माता जी के अमृत वाणी को ग्रहण करेंगे टुडे यू हैव कम हियर टू वर्शिप मी एज श्री गणेश वी हैव बीन सिंगिंग the praise of shri ganesha before every puja and <coughs> we have such tremendous respect for shri ganesh because we have found out that unless and until shri ganesha who is the symbol of our innocence is not awakened within us we cannot enter into the kingdom of god and even to stay there and to enjoy the blessings of shri ganesha we have to have our innocence fully blossoming so we praise him and he is very easily praised and whatever we might have done wrong before coming to sahaj yoga he completely forgives because he is the eternal child you have seen children when you <coughs> slap them sometimes get angry with them they forget it they only remember the laugh and not what they have suffered at your hands till they grow up they do not have memory of bad things done to them from the very beginning a child is born to a mother 
he doesn't know what he has gone through. Then gradually, the memory starts working and he starts restoring things within himself. But in the beginning, only he remembers what nice things have happened to him. So we always like to ponder about our childhood, what we enjoyed in our childhood. But as we start growing up, we start remembering all the miseries and all the <coughs> tribulations we had to go through. All the ordeals through which we have passed, we try to magnify it. In childhood, the children only remember the people who have loved them and not the people who have hurt them. They don't want to remember, perhaps. It looks like that. But when they grow up, they only try to remember those people who have harmed them or have troubled them. And that's how they make themselves very miserable. But the <coughs> principle of Ganesha is extremely subtle. It's the subtlest of subtle. And it exists in everything that it exists in the matter, in the form of vibrations. There is no matter which is without vibrations. It has vibrations which are seen even in the <coughs> atoms and also in the molecules of all matter that is existing. So Sri Ganesha is the first one who was established in the matter as well. As a result, we can see he exists in the sun, he exists in the moon, he exists in the whole universe, in the whole creation, and he continues to exist in human beings also. Only the human beings have capacity to some or other cover up your, the innocence. Otherwise, animals are innocent. Human beings have the freedom. If they want, they can cover up their innocence. They can shut down the doors of Sri Ganesha and say that he does not exist. They can cloud it. And that is why we find among human beings that they are doing so many horrible things, avoiding the existence of Sri Ganesha. But he acts. He acts in a way that he shows natural results of our wrongdoings. Like if you do things which are not pleasing to Sri Ganesh, he goes up to a point, forgives you up to a point, and then he starts emerging out as diseases, as physical diseases, and in women it becomes a mental disease. Also, it can create problems in the nature. The natural catastrophes are also only the curse of Sri Ganesha. When people start doing wrong things, behaving in a wrong manner, collectively then the natural catastrophes come to teach them a lesson. So in his essence, though he exists in everything, also in that he has capacity to assert his will to bring forth the destruction of the whole world. We have Sri Ganesha's uh, idea as a minute thing. We think he can go on a little mouse, though he must be a very minute. He is as minute as he is great. He surpasses all the deities because of his wisdom. He is the giver of wisdom. He gives us wisdom. 
he makes us learn he is our guru in that respect mahaguru because he teaches us how we should behave if you try to <coughs> surpass him and try to misbehave even the mother won't support because she knows that those who surpass shri ganesha are also the people who will never respect the mother so he is the epitome of respect for mother epitome he does not know any other gods he does not know sadashiva he does know anybody else but he only respects the mother so he is the one who is the power of devotion and complete surrender to mother and that's why he is the most powerful deity among all the deities and nobody can surpass him in his power <coughs> we have to understand that as children are growing shri ganesha starts uh, growing in them also but as they are human beings they can somehow or other try to overpower shri ganesha <coughs> so it's the duty of parents who are sadhus to see <coughs> that they look after their children in a way in a detached way to see that shri ganesha in them is settled the first sign of shri ganesha in a child is wisdom if the child is not wise if he is uh, troublesome if he does not know how to behave then that shows that the shri ganesha is being attacked by him <coughs> and these days in the modern times as it is children are very much under attack in a sense is under attack and it is very difficult for people to make a fine line as to how far to go with children and how far not to go today's lecture would be more concerning about how far to go with shri ganesha as far as children are concerned because that's a very important part because he is the giver of wisdom so the parents must understand that if he is the giver of wisdom there should be wisdom wisdom within me and if i have the wisdom then i have the balance <coughs> and i don't lose temper with children but i try to correct them but in such a manner that they get corrected on the contrary if you try to be very harsh with your children they might react and they might go ast or you try to restrict them too much then also they will behave in the same manner so one thing is to be taught to your own children as shri ganesha himself does that respect your mother your mother means your holy mother and your own mother that is very important if the father doesn't make the child respect the mother the child can never be all right because the authority comes from the father no doubt but mother must be respected but for that it is very important that mother must respect the father so in the presence of children if you start fighting with each other misbehaving and talking in a manner that is not proper also will have a very bad effect on the ganesha tatva of the child this upbringing is a very important thing in sahaj yoga because by god's grace you all have got realized children so you must know how far to go with your children to make them wiser to be moral to be righteous first thing is that you should try to preserve their wisdom if they say something wise you must appreciate but they should not also say out of place out of grace so the misbehavior is also not to be tolerated in the sense that whatever is wisdom within has to be expressed outside as light <coughs> now we go further with it to see how far shri ganesha acts as i said in the subtlest of subtlest he exists but you have to awaken him for example you have seen the water which is vibrated means what vibrated means the ganesha tatva is being enlightened in that water 
So when that water goes into your stomach or into your eyes or wherever you want to put it, it acts. Acts in a way that it excites Ishiganesha Tattva into uh, anything that you put it. Now you have seen we have got miracles of agriculture to begin with. Miracles of agriculture is such that uh, people are amazed, but it's very simple. Once you start exciting the Ganesh principle into the seed, it becomes ten times, sometimes hundred times. Even the Mother Earth, which we think to be something dead, can be uh, vibrated. Supposing you Sajogis walk bare feet on the ground, the Mother Earth gets vibrated. Such Mother Earth will act on the trees, on the grass, on the flowers, on the everything. As it is, the Sajogis have been telling me that in their ashrams all the flowers that grow are out of size and very fragrant. Like daisies never had fragrance in London or in England, never. Now the daisy size was so small, it has become so big and you see them everywhere so fragrant. And it is a miracle the first time when I told somebody that the daisies have fragrance, they couldn't believe it. And when they saw the fragrance, they were surprised. In the same way, Ganesha Tattva understand, thinks, organizes, works out. If it is awakened, if it is not, it is sleeping, then it does not. So it acts, it works out. Like a little seed when it sprouts, at the tip of the seed there is a little cell which has got the Ganesh Tattva which is being awakened. So it knows how to go down, how to go round the stone and how to embed itself and how to reach the source of water. But it has only the sense how far to go to exist, how far to go to nourish yourself on a very material plane, how to uh, allow the tree to grow. But this Ganesh Tattva starts becoming very, very uh, subtle and subtlest at the point of Agya Chakra. At the time of Agya Chakra, it understands that it has now the spiritual dimension. The same Ganesha Tattva which acted in a small little tip of a root now acts for the spiritual thing. That's why people close their eyes when they meditate because they don't want to see anything else but they want Sri Ganesha just to act for the meditative process of their Kundalini. This process of meditation, when we close our eyes, acts. But if you see, if somebody is sleeping and he is dreaming, you will see there will be the eyes will be all the time moving, there will be moving eyes. This Ganesh Tattva is now acted by your attention. If you have an attention which is all the time going from this place to that place to that place to that place, then it is affected. Especially in the case when we start uh, looking at men, looking at women all the time, then the, also our Ganesha Tattva gets uh, very much destroyed. Such people are difficult for rising in their ascent because Agya itself goes out. Then this Ganesha Tattva can also be reduced if you are very materialistic, all that worried about your things like uh, you have something in the house, you are worried about and looking at everything all the time, trying to uh, correct it and all the time worried about the matter. Then also this Ganesha Tattva can be lost because you are all the time worried about these things like uh, we are going to the shop and we are seeing everything, what is there, what is there, what should I buy, what should I buy, like that also if you do too much it will be. But supposing you are buying something out of beauty, for beauty, you want to buy something for beautifying your house, that means you are trying to do something to please others. You are doing it to make others very happy. 
then it acts the other way around. Then it, uh, uh, it increases your asset. But if it is done only to create a kind of a joy for others, sharing of the beauty of whatever you have bought or you have taken. But supposing you are bu buying anything for making others feel jealous, that also I have recently learned that there is a capacity like that for people to buy something to make others jealous, not to make somebody feel happy. If there are people who buy things just to make others feel jealous, then also their Ganesha Tattva can be destroyed. What you should buy anything, you should make a beautiful house. When somebody comes to your house, you should say, oh, what a nice thing we have seen. Not attachment to the thing, but attachment to the thing, how people feel, how they feel nice and relaxed and uh, they feel uh, their Sri Ganesha within them, which is beauty. When this feeling comes in, then we should say there's Ganesh Tattva. And it's a very motherly feeling, it is. Like a mother always wants to give uh, sweet things to her children, beautiful things to her children. In the same way, in that you have that vatsalya, as it's called, is the feeling of the mother for the child. That subtle feeling you have that people have come to my house, now see how they are happy, they are enjoying this and they are appreciating it. In that way, you also satisfy a very great uh, Ganesh principle is that you have uh, taken note of the artists. Though the artists are creating, they are all beautiful things out of matter uh, through the Swadhisthana, but without Swadhisthana being governed by Sri Ganesha, it cannot be beautiful. These days, as you see, the artists are taking to all sense sort of grotesque things and very immoral things. And these things are of no eternal value. Today people will buy them and tomorrow they'll throw away. Only the things which have got the subtle Ganesh principle in it acting, which makes you soothe down, which makes you feel uh, peaceful, which makes you feel happy, is the one uh, that is appreciated. So, Sri Ganesha establishes within you the higher self. So, the baser self uh, which enjoys all baser things of lives are being curtailed down, being cut down, sometimes completely destroyed by Sri Ganesha. I'll give an example of Mona Lisa. If you see Mona Lisa, I mean, I don't know, she cannot be an actress, she cannot win any beauty contest, I think. She, her face is very serene, very motherly, very pure, her eyes. And why is it that she's eternally so much appreciated? The reason is there is Ganesha principle in her. She's a mother. And the story about that one is that this lady had lost her child. And she would never smile, she would never cry. And one little child was brought to her. And when she saw the child, then the smile that came on her face of that love for the child is being depicted by this great artist. And that's why people are appreciating it. And you have seen in the West, though the people don't show much uh, interest in the mother-child relationships, anywhere you go is the mother and child theme, is the best. They'll show you a photograph, this is mother and child, this is Christ's mother and child. When the Christ was brought down, the mother is there. They have to have mother and the child principle acting, otherwise that picture is not regarded as something great. Or you have to have actually Christ, who is a Ganesh principle himself, to be shown. I haven't seen any picture as such of those days where these principles are not there. Even Picasso has used it. Even people who have been quite modern had to use this principle to popularize. But some people have used to popularize not the Ganesh principle, just anti-Ganesh principles. All such things have vanished into thin air and I see now gradually it's all going down and down and down and down. Despite the fact people have lost their morals, but still 
They would like to have Rembrandt. They like to have Leonardo da Vinci. They would like to have uh, uh, such artists who have done mother and child. It's very surprising. Even I went to Austria this time. I said, uh, "What statues you have?" Said, "We have got beautiful Madonna and the child." So this principle is the most pleasing principle. It's the most pleasing principle for human beings to see the children, to play with them, to enjoy their company. Why? Because it has that sweetness of a child. It's really, I should say, tickles joy within you when you see a child. Immediately the face becomes different. I have told you that I have seen even a crocodile uh, cracking her eggs. I mean, they showed it in a film, and you should have seen the eyes of the crocodile at that time. How carefully she was cracking! So beautiful her eyes were, full of such love pouring out of her eyes. I can't believe these are the eyes of the same crocodile. <laughs> and so slowly she is cracking with her mouth all the eggs, and the little little crocodiles coming out, and then she brings them. On the shore and washes them in the mouth all the time, so carefully, like a bathroom. She uses her mouth. You see, you should see how animals also act to their children. But when you become sort of modern, so-called, your actions are very funny. Uh, there are people who are killing children. There are ch ch people who are abusing children. I mean, it is worse than rakshasas. Even rakshasas have not done, pishachas have not done. The ganas are surprised. What sort of these new creatures have come up from where? That they have no love for their children. That they can kill their children, murder them, break their hands. These are their own children. If they do this to their own children, what will they do to other children? So love for your child has to be absolutely important. But you should. Not as such, yogis have only attachment for your child. First thing, and the second thing is, you must know how to give a complete margin to your love. The margin is benevolence. Is it benevolent for my child? Am I spoiling my child? Am I too much encouraging my child? Am I playing into the hands of my child, or I am managing the child all right? Because in childhood the father and mother have to manage the children, they have to tell children, and children have to be obedient, and they have to listen to parents. But these days children are not obedient; they are not because there is they find that the parents among themselves are not obedient to each other. Also, they find the society is such that where children go on uh, pestering the parents, so they also become like that. But doesn't matter. You are surgery, so you should. Bring up your children who should be obedient, who should be wise, who should be sensible, with the same love that the crocodile has for her little crocodiles. Now, when we come to the subtler side of Ganesha Tattva, that is, it expresses in our eyes. When I see some things, I see it as a joy-giving thing. Just joy giving, and if I want to buy something, then I think all right, I can buy it for a certain person. He will like it because I'll know what they like, so I'll buy that thing for that person. Or else, if I'm buying something for my family, I think the same. Like I've built a house now where I'm going to put all the things, the presents you have given, like a museum. And I'm going to ask all the villagers to come and see it because they have never seen such thing. They can't travel to Switzerland, live alone England. So we have to. I'm thinking of making that house in such a manner that these villagers who have never seen beautiful things should come and see. In India, it's not a case very much with the simple people to have jealousies. Only the new materialistic people have developed this habit of jealousy. But otherwise. They will always say, "What a nice thing! Uh, how beautiful it is! How they are!" Like uh, you were singing uh, songs uh, about uh, Sahaj Yoga in Pune. Actually, you have really picked up very well, I must say, 
but there were masters of this music sitting there watching you singing. They were uh, uh, the masters of drama and play very well known artist uh, in India. And uh, they, then they said that uh, where you went to see their play also in Pune, if you remember. So they offered me, Mother, that we want to celebrate your birthday. I said, it's very difficult because you'll be so far away. No, no, we'll come. The whole night they traveled and the whole day practically. They came about five o'clock, imagine. They finished their drama about, say, three o'clock or four o'clock and then they traveled all the day. Arrived at about five o'clock from somewhere called Belgaum. And uh, six thirty was the program, so they were all dressed up again. And what a comparing they did. They said we were ashamed. We used to think that we Maharashtrians are very good at music, very good at talas and this, but we were ashamed the way these foreigners sang our music so well. We cannot sing like them. The, their music, we cannot sing while they sang our music. And we were all very much ashamed and embarrassed. How could they sing so well? And the appreciation was so great that I was myself embarrassed the way they were saying, how it has happened to these people, what is their guru have done, what have they done to these people that they can sing so well. So the appreciation and the whole thing enamored, we have a tape of that I think, audio tape, I don't know if you have video tape or not, but if you have, please get it. It's very interesting the way they appreciated my children, the way they were singing. And to them, I felt in their saying and all that, because they are such masters and so developed in there. The way they were appreciating, as if they were appreciating children singing something great. See, the, in that, the report was that of a, a very sweet report of Vatsalya, is the feeling of a motherliness. That look at these children are singing so well. It's happened with many people I've seen uh, when some artist came, as you know, that when they saw you people appreciating and singing, they had the same feeling. How could these children, how could these people sing so well? How did they know so well? I mean, all that uh, beautiful feeling and all that appreciation created such a nice atmosphere as we had some very great artists and how they appreciated you. Instead of saying, that, oh, what, well, what are these, are no good for uh, music and nothing. They have so much appreciated that these people who have never known Indian music are singing so well. So in that appreciation also, that fatherliness, that motherliness was there, that vatsalya was there, and the situation was so beautiful. Even, say, when a person like Ravi Shankar has to play with Yehudi Mehenuin, Yehudi Mehenuin is a child before him. But I've seen how he looks after him and how he protects him, as we say in my Hindi language, Samhala. All the time is looking after him and managing it. And also we have seen in the music part, when uh, supposing a the tablewala is sitting and a very uh, senior musician is sitting, master is sitting, he say, please look after me, Samhala, look after me, always with very great uh, feeling of a child that you look after me. All these things are very important in life to create good relationships between ourselves also. Those who are younger to us, those who are not so uh, well off, or those who are not so much talented, or those who are not uh, so much uh, equipped in knowledge of Sahaja Yoga, or who are not so much senior in Sahaja Yoga. We have to look after the others like in a very fatherly manner or we can say as a motherly manner, that they are not equipped, so all right. We have a Ganesha Tattva, so excite their Ganesha Tattva. They should feel dependent on us for uh, achieving the, yeah, the mastery or achieving the higher state. As the Guru principle is absolutely bound by Ganesha principle. If a guru does not have a Ganesh principle, he becomes a horrid, horrid, horrid fellow and nobody wants to stick on to him and they all run away from him. Though he might punish, he might also get angry with the disciples. But basically what he thinks, he is my progeny. I am developing him, I am building him. But in the modern 
thinking is that let them be individuals, let them be independent. So the father and mother do not look after their children in that manner, that they should, that see, this is my son, I have got a talent, I must teach him, he must come up, he is the one who is a continuation of my own self. So this idea of having every individual, you are individual, at 18 years you get out of the house, you do what you like, stand on your legs. No, life is a continuous basis. It is not just you stand on your legs, but it is a question of one has to be all the time connected with the whole. Unless and until you are connected completely, we cannot understand collectivity of innocence. The collectivity of innocence, I see sometimes, I'm very happy that a child of somebody is in the lap of somebody, sitting very sweetly, coming as if he's your own father, coming and sitting just on your lap, without knowing that he's not my father, but still, that consciousness is not there. So this breaks the feeling of my and possession, that this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. And what makes you the feeling that we are now uh, a means, a means, we can say, an instrument, a media, by which we express the Ganesha Tattva all over. That is vibrations. So the vibrations itself about which you are asking, these vibrations themselves are nothing but the principle of Sri Ganesha, is Omkara. And when it is, then what is it? That feeling, as I told you, the Fatsal, the feeling of love between a child and a mother, that feeling, it is the one that is vibrations, between the child and the mother. The distance between the two is vibrations. And that's what one has to feel, that he's a child still and there's the mother, and mother is bringing the child, giving all the powers to the child, bringing up, loving the child, understanding the limitations of the child, looking after all that, all the sweetness, all the wisdom of the child to be appreciated. That is vibrations. And if you see the subtle side of this, it's not my child, it's not, it's not only uh, a limited thing, because it is eternal, it's everywhere. So you cannot have it live. In everything you do, I have seen people, the way they handle things uh, in the West, we Indians have to learn also from them. What's happening? So we have to accept for them what is uh, what is the way to handle also beautiful things, how to look after beautiful things, how to manage beautiful uh, relationships. See, you shouldn't be harsh, you shouldn't be unkind, you shouldn't say things which are insulting to others so that the relationships are broken. So all the relationships that are between human beings and God are through the Ganesha principle. So when it becomes the relationship between you and God, then there are vibrations. And then that same relationship should extend to everything that you do. You should see uh, what things are good, whatever has got vibrations. But today I want to tell you something very important about this all-pervading power we have heard about. These are nothing but vibrations. Sparma Chaitanya is nothing but vibrations, where all identities are lost. Where the mother is lost, father is lost, we can say, nothing remains, then it is just this vibrations, this subtle vatsalya uh, exists, that's all. And this is the only thing, out of which everything comes and remains in itself. Like we can say that the sun's rays come out and then they try to create chlorophyll. So it's not that we cannot compare sun with that. Or we can say from the uh, ocean the, uh, the clouds come out and they try to nourish the Mother Earth. 
that's also not, cannot be compared. Everything is inside. This Parama Chaitanya has got everything inside. So we can say that everything is nothing but knowledge, is nothing but truth, is nothing but light. But when the folds of these come out, then we get into the folds of uh, that Chaitanya and then we become ignorant. But there is nothing like ignorance. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Like there is darkness because there is no light. Once light comes, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So ignorance doesn't exist. But what happens that the folds of uh, this ocean into that people go and it is lost. Thus we understand one thing very clearly, that we are in Param Chaitanya, we are made by Param Chaitanya, all the time we are surrounded by it, only thing is we are sometimes lost in the folds. And why? Why we are lost in the folds is because of our own, our own uh, unawareness. This awareness has to come, that we are part and parcel of that Paramachaita. The whole thing is uh, called as Chidvilasa, is the, is the vilas, is the playful enjoyment of God's attention. Now you will say, how can that be? For example, we see the sun, and just to give a simile closer to it, we see the sun and then we see the water. We see the water in the lake, right? There is water because of the sun we can see the water there. Then supposing we see the mirage. We see the mirage and then we think this is water. We run after the water. But the whole thing is the play of the sun. Whether it's a mirage, whether it's a water, whether it's the sun. In the same way, this Parama Chaitanya acts and what we get lost is in our awareness that we are Parama Chaitanya. That's why the play starts. The play starts like yesterday's, day before yesterday's puja. What did we do? We were sitting there, it started raining. So, to prove, to prove that why I can control rain. So it rained, some people were covering up something, this thing. I gave a bandha. After some time, the rain moved out from the puja to the backside. It was not raining where you were sitting. And after that, it became a sun and it was so clouded. Sun came, it was became sunny. So that's how you have to become aware of the powers of Chaitanya. Now when you give bandhan, what you do is to put the chaitanya into action. Oh no, act here, act there, act here. Though you are supposing in the ocean, but the ocean acts on you all the time. You cannot act on the ocean, you cannot ask water to do this and do that. But as realized soul, you are empowered, now you can ask water, all right, you dissolve this, you do this, you do that. But for that it is important to be the masters. And to become the masters, you see, like a matter becomes a human being. And from human being you have to become the masters of the matter. And you handle the matter. So we come back to the same. Like agriculture we can handle just vibrating. We can handle water, we can handle sun, we can handle moon. Because there's a rapport, now we are aware a rapport has been established. So all this play is extremely beautiful to me. I see it, but now you all have to know that you all have become realized souls and you have those powers. So all other nonsensical things that you learn, all nonsensical things you indulge into, you better give up. There's no sense in it. Whatever is sensible you should do because there's Sri Ganesha within you who is absolutely sensible. He's nothing but sense. He's the giver of sense. So he is the killer of the demons, as they say. He is the one who removes all the ordeals. By how? By improving our awareness. So ordeals do not, 
remain because you give up and then it works out. Now I asked somebody, uh, Phil, I asked him to write down about the miracles and he says now it has become like a voluminous book. It will be because before realization whatever looked like miracle is no more a miracle. Miracle has lost its meaning because now you are empowered and you can do it. It works in everything, in your talent, in your understanding, in your education, in every way. Like there are some boys who said, Mother, you see we couldn't solve one problem, so we gave a bandhan. Immediately the whole thing came unto us and we wrote it down and they stood first. It has happened with many. So in every action, in everything, whatever you do, you should know it is the Parama Chaitanya that acts. Only thing you have to be aware of yourself and aware of it, it acts. And you just jump into that awareness and it works. And that you have seen. But still, so many people do not know. So many people still, though they know through their brains, do not know in their hearts. And so many people, even if they know in their hearts, they do not act in their attention. So only these three things you have to improve. Is one is your head, another is your heart, and third is your liver. If you can improve these three organs, this Parama Chaitanya will act. But then all this attention about money, so many people, money, this, that, there's nothing to it. Parama Chaitanya will create everything for you, whatever you want. It may not create money because it doesn't have a mint, but it will create possibilities. possibilities and this is something to be understood very well and it's so blissful to know that now you are aware of the Parama Chaitanya and you can master it. Master it in the sense not that you dominate it but you ask him like a jinn, you know, you can say, all right, do this, do that. With respect, with respect, it works. But the way sometimes we do not pay respect to Parama Chaitanya is also something surprising. Uh, the way we act all the time, the way we are behaving, like in my presence, people will sit down and close their eyes or they will start uh, worshipping the photograph instead of me. Sometimes uh, the way they handle their kundalini, sometimes the way they behave towards themselves and others, all these things are to be understood. Now that we have entered into the kingdom of God means Paramachaitar. And that we are very important citizens of that. If one can understand this, then I think Sahaja Yoga can be very successful. Everything will work out. It miraculously, everything will work out. And all those who are not aware about the possibilities to what they can reach, they are thrown out in the sense in the fold, in the ignorance, so-called, into the darkness. Again, they can come back to light when they have sense. So be forgiving about them. It can happen to you also if you understand that way. I hope today's lecture you have been able to assimilate within yourself. That's very important to assimilate, to know that you are in the Paramachaitanya. And that's how you'll become very sweet, you'll become very considerate and very loving, affectionate and wise. That's very important. May God bless you. इसी अवस्था में हम निशब्द ध्यान में बैठेंगे
परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपकी परम कृपा में अपने निस्वार्थ भाव से अपने विवेक से हम इस विश्व की सारी समस्याओं को समझे और उन समस्याओं का निराकरण हम पूरी तरह करें परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपकी परम कृपा में हम कभी भी किसी अशुभ और अधार्मिक संस्कृति का अधार्मिक विचारों का और अधार्मिक लोगों का स्वीकार ना करें परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आज का यह सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं कृपावंत तो होकर हम सबको और इस संपूर्ण विश्व को आशीर्वादित कीजिए श्री माता जी को प्रणाम करेंगे और सामूहिकता में कुंडलिनी चढ़ाकर बंधन लेंगे <laughs> 